I'm going to do some random pulls for American Mahjong using National Mahjong League rules. The purpose of this exercise is to practice finding the strength in a dealt hand, because that's the first step to picking a hand. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. Three, two, one. With this exercise, we're going to do a what would you play and what would you pass scenario. We'll do three random pulls. Pause the video after each one. Make note of what you would play and what you would pass. Then after the video, write your comment below the video. Try not to read in the account. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Don't read any of the comments under the video until you watch the exercise. That way you won't be affected by what you read. Pause the video for each random pull and make note of what you would play and what you would pass. And then we'll see what the consensus is for each one of these random pulls. We're gonna roll these dice to determine which seat we're in. We'll just count around the table the sum of the dice. I rolled an eight, so we're going to be player four, also known as North. North is non-dealer, so we'll get 13 tiles. We have a joker, a flower, a pair of ones with our dots, pair of five, seven with bams, single five, eight. For pull one, what would you play and what would you pass? We have multiples, pair of ones, pair of fives, pair of sevens. Sometimes the multiples don't work together Sometimes they do. In this case, there is a hand that uses one, three, five through the full range. One, three, five, five, seven, nine. Last hand under odds. We have five, seven, seven, nine. I think that the strength of this hand would be the multiples for sure, but also odds. And this is an odd, but our pattern is heavier towards big odds. I think that's what I would play. Probably five, seven, nine, five, seven, seven, nine, second hand down on the right. And you can use any number of jokers with those because the convention is Pung Kong, Pung Kong. I would hold this for joker bait or hold it for an option for the concealed hand. This probably would be discarded. I would not pass that. Here's the kicker. What would you pass? I would not pass like numbers. In my opinion, that's just as risky as passing a pair. So I would not do that. I would pass one of each suit and break up the joker bait. Pass those. Five, seven, seven, nine. Second hand down, any number of jokers could be used. For the next poll, we're going to be east, because I rolled a five. If north is four, east is five. So we're gonna be the dealer. I'll get 14 tiles this time. We have a pair of flowers, a west, a pung of green dragons, singles with our dots, singles with our bams, singles with cracks. What would you play and what would you pass?
I think the strength for this particular set of tiles is going to be the flowers and the dragons. What I think I would do here is hold year potential and consecutive potential with BAMs. So I would hold the BAMs and the two. The dragon hand in the year category does not use wins, so I would pass that. The dragon hand in the year category is the fourth one down, and it does use a pair of flowers. The consecutive hand with dragons is the fifth one down under consecutive run, and it uses flowers. So I think that is what I would attempt here. Either a year hand with dragons or consecutive run with dragons. I would pass those three. It's really six, one half dozen the other as to which to pass. Actually, no, because if we pass the five instead of the three, we're left with like numbers for the next pass if we happen to get what we want. I would go ahead and pass like that. If we get everything we want in our next pass, we at least have tiles that we can pass safely for the next pass. So I think I would pass these. For the third poll, we're going to be player two, non-dealer. For this one, we have no flowers, no jokers, no multiples. This will be a really great one to work on. What would you play and what would you pass? I'd say the predominant pattern here is consecutive run, five through nine. So I would pass those and that. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I had to pick a hand, that's probably the one I would play. First one under consecutive run. We could play the second one down, five, six, seven, eight. This is what we're left with to pass. These tiles, no matter how you slice it, would be risky. If you pass a one bam with two wins, if they're playing a year hand with news, you would fit right into their hand. I try not to pass white dragons because they're a dual tile. There's only three dragons. So dragons overall are pretty valuable. I think what I would probably do is give up either the five or the nine to break that up. Since we have a year tile, I would give up the five and pass probably those three. We have two odd tiles, two different suits with a wind. And I would focus on five through nine, probably in one suit. This would be an option for five, six, seven, eight, if it paired up right, second hand down. So either the first hand or the second hand under consecutive run. Identifying the strength in a dealt hand is the first step to picking a hand. When you get your dealt hand, look for multiples because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. Pairs, pungs, kongs, maybe even a quint if you have jokers. Build around multiples first. 
If you don't have multiples, look for the predominant pattern. Build around the predominant pattern until a multiple forms. Then reassess and build around the multiple. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table between now and the next set of random pulls for American Mahjong using National Mahjong League rules. May all your picks be keepers.